the tallest tower here in Dubai was only 33 floors. So imagine, imagine where we are now today. So for me, that it was really like a dream. But the extra height brings with it a new problem. As well as the tourists that visit it, thousands of people live and work in the Burj. The building's capacity is 35,000 people, the equivalent of a small city. One of the most important parts of a city is the transport network, and that's absolutely critical if you've got a vertical city like the Burj. One of the major challenges in any tall building is how do you move people through it efficiently and quickly. Stairs are impractical, although the Burj has plenty of them, nearly 3,000 in fact. When it comes to vertical living, elevators really are the key. But once again, the tower's extreme height means the solution isn't as simple as it seems. In the past, the obvious solution many came to when thinking about tall buildings was to simply make sure every elevator went to every floor all throughout the building. And that at first seems to make sense. But if you've ever been in a hotel during checkout time on a Saturday morning and you were on the seventh floor of a seven-story building, you learn quickly that you will stop at every single floor. Your 30-second ride to the lobby is now a three-and-a-half-minute ride, and that seems like an eternity. Now, magnify that by 160 stories. To save everyone from spending half their day in the lifts, engineers turn to a solution inspired by city commuting. You have express trains and you have local trains. And the express train takes you the 90 blocks you don't want to stop at, and you get off and take a local for the last two or three blocks that you really intend to get to. You can do the same thing with elevators. Right in the heart of the building, nestled in the concrete core, are 57 elevators. Eight of these are express elevators that only stop at floors 43, 76, and 123, the so-called sky lobbies. From here, people can take one of the local elevators to all the floors in between. To make the system even more efficient, two of the elevators are double-deckers. So as tourists make their way to the observation deck on level 148, others are riding to their offices in the car above. We're in the heart of Burj Khalifa at this moment. Uh, next to me, you see uh, one of the biggest machines, or the biggest machines we have in the world, driving a double-deck uh, elevator. The lifts in the Burj are some of the fastest in the world, whisking people hundreds of feet up and down at 22 miles per hour. The acceleration and deceleration of the elevators is controlled in detail. The idea of the experience is to let people not feel the movement. This phenomenal speed also serves another purpose. The lift forms part of an evacuation plan that turns conventional wisdom on its head. Everyone knows that in case of fire, you never take the elevator and you always take the stairs. But the Burj Khalifa is a bit different. One particular elevator has an incredible travel of 138 floors more than any other elevator in any other building in the world. This is the Burge's lifeboat. It is encased in thick, fire-resistant concrete and can take 26 people at a time safely down to the ground in less than a minute. Having a fail-safe emergency plan in place is more important here than anywhere. I think the prospect of being stuck 160 floors up in the air, should anything happen, petrifies me. Just next door to the Burj Khalifa is the Address Tower, a 63-storey hotel and residential skyscraper. New Year's Eve 2015. The address is engulfed in flames hundreds of feet tall after an electrical fire breaks out. In 2017, another Dubai tower, the unfortunately named Marina Torch, has to be evacuated after it too catches fire. For the second time in two years, hundreds of terrified residents are forced to flee for their lives. They actually came around pounding on our door and telling us to get out, so that's when we 
continue to leak. The Burge is twice as tall as the torch and can hold thousands more people. Evacuating them all in the event of a fire would take far too long. So instead, engineers have designed the building itself to keep people safe for as long as possible. They've created what we call refuge areas. So that means that people can go down a few levels of stairs, but then they're into these encased, enclosed rooms that, you know, smoke can't infiltrate into them. They've got fresh air supplies and they're fireproof. These safe havens only work if people can reach them. The stairwells must be kept clear. Today, a routine test will see if the tower's specially designed smoke suppression system is working properly. Ideally, this is a fire exit route and it needs to be safe for whomever is using it. In the event of a fire, fresh air is pumped into the stairwells at a higher than normal pressure. It creates an invisible barrier at the thresholds preventing any smoke from getting past. 